Attention! McCarthy Math Academy proudly presents the Math FSA Boot Camp Series. Hello everyone, I'm Miss McCarthy and I am so excited that you are here. are more than a test score. We don't want you stressing out about this test. We just want you to activate your greatness within. And you might be saying, But Miss McCarthy, listen, I know that math is your jam, but math and I, yeah, we're not really the best of friends. You may have struggled in the past, and you know what? Good. Struggle is necessary because struggle makes us stronger. If we go over something in these videos that you're like, hmm, that skill didn't quite click yet, I'm gonna send you to more videos to help you practice. Your teachers and I, we can expose you to all kinds of tools and strategies, but you have to choose to use them. You have to choose to own them. Imagine opening up that test and feeling so excited to throw down your best. This can be your reality. So now is the time that you need to activate the person you were born to be and let's do this. Are you ready to throw 100% focus, hustle, and heart into this right now? That's what I'm talking about, yes! Okay, let's go ahead and jump on into today's episode of the Math FSA Bootcamp Series. And <laughs> I almost forgot to say, uh, let me teach ya. What is happening fourth grade? Welcome to the Math FSA Bootcamp Series. This is video number 23. All right, so I'm hoping that you have the worksheet that you need for today. So, because now it's time for you to pause the video and solve the problems on your own. And if you're thinking, I don't have the worksheet, Ms. McCarthy, what are you talking about? Where can I get it? Well, if you check the link below or somewhere around this video, it'll take you to my website where you can download the worksheet that you need for this episode, along with all the other episodes in this Math FSA fourth grade bootcamp series. So now that you're ready, go ahead and pause the video and I want you to solve number, actually, it's not number one and number two, it's a two part question y'all today. It's one question with two parts. So technically two questions, but it's a two parter. So it's, it's different today, okay? <laughs> All right, solve the two part question. I want you to throw down your best as if this two parter were on the test and then come on back to check your work and grab all those helpful strategies that I'm about to throw your way. All right, I'll see you in a few seconds, maybe a little more, maybe a few minutes because you're throwing down your best after all. We're not rushing here. All right, fourth grade, welcome back. So the very first thing that we're going to do for this two part question is identify the question types that we see here. So here I'm seeing part A and I see A, B, C, and D. So what kind of question type is this? It is a multiple choice question, you've got it. That means that there should be one correct answer. We'll go through all of them just to make sure. And if I slide this up, the next question or the part B of the two part question. We see a grid right here. So what kind of question is this? It's a gridded response. You're getting pretty good at this now, huh? <laughs> so let's go ahead and start with part A, okay? Let's read the text. Let's read the question. Let's mark up our text and let's make sure that it makes sense. This question has two parts. We know. Nine snakes ooh, were measured at a local zoo. Oof. Okay, so let's just take a look at this thing right here. This is called a line plot, right? And I know a lot of kids go, ugh, because they think that line plots can be a little bit challenging, but I actually really like them. It's just like a number line with X's, it's fun. And we're talking about snakes and that's super fun, right? Okay, so we've got snakes at a local zoo down here at length in feet. So these are how long the snakes are. And I see five feet, six feet, and seven feet, but we also have X's all throughout, which means that we'll be looking at fractional pieces in between each hole. So that'll be something that we check out. And each X represents a snake, right? So if nine snakes were measured, each X is a snake. Part A says, what is the 
difference in feet, of course, of the longest and the shortest snake. What is the difference? So what we're doing is we're finding the longest snake and then finding the shortest snake and we're comparing them. So which operation is that? Are we adding, subtracting, multiplying, or dividing if we're comparing their lengths? Yeah, we're subtracting here. If we're finding the difference, it means that we are subtracting the two. So now we have to locate the longest length. Well here, remember that it says length in feet. So seven would be the longest, right? A snake at this zoo is not seven feet. So let's back it up, back it up. Oh, right here. This is the longest snake. And then let's find the shortest snake. That would be all the way here. And then whoop, this guy right here or a girl. Maybe it's a female snake. I don't know. So now that we've identified our longest and shortest snake, we have to now see they're not by a whole number. So we have to figure out the fractional value of the snake. Let's start with the longest. Here's six. Here's seven. The way we figure out the denominator is to count the number of jumps between each hole. So here we go. Starting at the six, one. Don't start counting until you make the jump. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That means our denominator is eight. So this would be one eighth, two eighths, three eighths, four eighths, five eighths. Oops. I just wrote five sixths. Six eighths, seven eighths. And eight eighths is the same as one whole, which six plus one would be seven. Right here, our largest snake is at the four eighths, but don't forget it's actually six and four eighths, right? So our longest snake is six and four eighths feet. And we're subtracting. Of course, we put the longest snake first. Let's go locate our shortest snake. So we know our denominator is an eighth, so this would be one eighth right there, right? So six and four eighths minus five and one eighth. And since our denominators match, we are good to go. So I also like to take a look at the fraction. So we've got four eighths minus one eighth and then four. Can we do four minus one? We can, which, so we don't need to regroup anything here. Let's subtract the whole numbers. Six minus five equals what? One and then four eighths minus one eighth equals three eighths. So it is one and three eighths. Is it three eighths of a foot? Nope. Cause we're forgetting the, this one forgot the hole. B looks good. Five and one eighth. Well, that was the shortest snake. Shade! And the longest snake was six and four eighths feet. So those are kind of confusing ones, but when you find the difference of them, it is one and three eighths choice B. All right, let's take a look at part B. Another snake is added to the collection at the zoo. The 10th snake. So remember before in the line plot, there were nine snakes and now there's 10. There's one more being added. The 10th snake is one and five eighths feet longer than the second longest snake. Not the longest, but the second longest. You gotta be careful to read these questions. That's why I mark up my text like this. How long is the 10th snake in feet? Here, this is the big point. The 10th snake is one and five eighths foot longer than the second largest snake. So let's go up here, find the second longest snake. This was the longest, so the next one in line would be right here, and that would be at six and two eighths, right? So the second longest is six and two eighths. But the tenth snake is one and five eighths feet longer, so we're gonna add that to what the second longest snake is. And let, now let's add up our holes. We've got one plus six equals seven, and we have five eighths plus two eighths equals seven eighths. So awesome. That means the 10th snake is seven and seven eighths feet long, but we have a problem. What's the problem with this right here in our grid? Yeah, we can't put mixed numbers inside of the grid because if we try to do that, it would look like 77 eighths and that's not correct. The grid cannot read that. It can only read fractions greater than one, not mixed numbers. 
We have to remember that, okay? So this is wrong O. Cancel that out, don't leave that on your paper. We have to convert this mixed number into a fraction greater than one. And the way that I do that is I do a little McCarthy move where I go multiply, then add, swoop. And I like to go like this. Multiply, then add, swoop. All right, let's try that again. Multiply, then add, swoop. One more time. This is so much fun. The swoop is so fun. Multiply, then add swoop. You got it. So what does that mean? Well, we're gonna take our denominator times our whole number, eight times seven. Ooh, I'm not sure what that is, but I do have the multiplication mashup, so let me do the eight song. Party rocking with the eights for sure. Eight, 16, 24, 32, 40, 48. 56, that's seven times, right? So 56, whoop, plus seven. 56, 57, 58, 59, 60, 61, 62, 63. 63, and then our denominator is eight, which is way different than 77 eighths. So don't do that. So I'm going to put this in. So, I just put the wrong thing in there. If I had a pencil, I'd erase it. There we go, 63 eighths, and bubble it in. And if you're saying, Miss McCarthy, but my teacher tells me to put it over here and go like eight slash three and six, you should totally do that then because the cool thing with the gridded responses is that you can start from the left or you can start from the right. My suggestion has been throughout the series to follow your teacher's guide. Now, if you know that you need some more help with line plots, I want you to stay tuned because I'm about to throw some more videos at you right now. All right, fourth grade, I know that line plots can be kind of intense and that you might need some more practice. So here is where I want you to start. I want you to check out the link below or somewhere around this video to McCarthy Math 155. The 155 stands for 155 jam-packed high energy lessons that are super duper fun. You're gonna love them. But you, in order to access the videos, you do have to become a member. However, everybody has the chance to grab a free, totally free trial, all you, that you need is your email and your name and all that. McCarthy Math 155, you're gonna check out Unit 12 once you have access to those videos. And what I recommend is while you have access for your free trial, check out as many episodes as you want. There's workbook pages that go with it, everything. You gotta check it out. Check out Unit 12 because here's where you'll find six extra videos to help you with line plots, starting from the basic and getting a little bit more intense to walk you through it. That way you feel confident before the test. And teachers, just so you know, this is something that you can share with your students. And I walk you through how to do that in the tutorials tab on my website. Just check out video number five. The next link that I'd love for you to pay attention to is to my How to Pass the Math FSA series. This was the very first series that I created on YouTube back when the FSA was a computer-based test for fourth grade. It's not a computer-based test anymore, so some of the questions, they look a little bit different. Like you'll see a drag and drop. You can't drag and drop on paper, right? which is why I wanted to create the Math FSA Bootcamp series to reflect the current version of the FSA. Still, the How to Pass the Math FSA series is standard based and provides great practice for you. So the link below to the How to Pass the Math FSA video will take you to the same standard that we just worked on today. So line plots, some more practice with line plots and I don't think it's snakes this time. So check that out. You also heard me busting out the multiplication mashup. So I'll make sure that I include that link below too. This is totally something that you should check out if you know that you need to be faster with your multiplication facts. I'd love for you to follow me on my social media platforms. That way you can stay in the loop with everything going on and everything that I'm releasing out into the world. I'm on Instagram and Facebook at McCarthy Math Academy. I'm also on YouTube, of course, at McCarthy Math Academy. If you do happen to be watching this from YouTube, could you take a quick millisecond to tap that like button? Not to make me feel good, but to support my mission. Because you see, there are so many students who struggle with math and I am on a mission to make math fun, make it click and make it stick for as many students as possible. So when you tap that like button, you are transforming somebody's life. And that is really awesome. While you're at it, go ahead and subscribe. That way you're the first to know when I drop a new video on YouTube. And finally, before we go today, I just want you to know that you were created for a purpose. 
That's right. You are the generation that we have been waiting for. So find your light and shine it bright. Watch out world because we have a whole new generation of world changers. That's you fourth grade getting ready to step it up and make this world a better place. When you have the choice, choose kindness and you always have that choice. And I cannot wait to see you all on the next episode. Bye.